Right, it's Mr. Palmer here, um, doing the next uh, functions of the operating system video. Or I should say the second and only other video about functions of the operating system. So this one's about multitasking. <clears throat> Big questions are how does multitasking work on a computer? So, um, don't know if you recognize this guy, Colombo, uh, famous TV detective, right? Colombo's got a bit of a problem. He's got two mobile phones. He's expecting an important call that's going to help him crack a case. But he doesn't know which one's going to ring. Both phones are running down. He's only got one charger. Okay. Basically, how are you going to help him out here? All right. He needs to make sure he doesn't miss, miss the call, but he can only charge one phone at a time. Well, the smart folk amongst you will probably say, you know what he needs to do is he will charge the first one for 10 minutes and then charge the other one for 10 minutes and then go back to charging the first one for 10 minutes, the second one for 10 minutes and keep alternating. That way he can keep both of them running. Yeah. Without either of them running down. So this is kind of like similar to what we're talking about on a computer, all right? Well, how does this relate? First of all, obviously, what's that? Well, you tell me what's that component with the red box around it? You should have remembered it's the CPU. Uh, my screenshot's upside down for some reason. But anyway, here we go, okay? So the CPU, basically, with a single core, is only processing one instruction at a time. A bit like the situation with the phone charger where you can only work with one phone at a time, all right? So that's not how we, things are reflected in the real world though, isn't it? Because basically we want to be able to multitask, okay? So run like several applications at the same time and keep working. But in actual fact, the CPU can't do that, right? It's only going to be able to work with uh, the first application coming in to be processed. And once that's finished, it, they can work on instructions for the second one and then with the third one, all right? So if you think about the situation with the mobile phone chargers, perhaps we can do something similar when we're processing applications, processing applications, all right? Now it's really helpful for us that the CPU is really, really fast. You've got a 3.2 gigahertz processor, there's 3.2 billion instructions per second, approximately, okay? Obviously, if you've got like a 2.5 gigahertz octa-core processor, then that's doing a hell of a lot of instructions in a second, all right? But here I'm just thinking about a, sing a single core processor, right? Even though that single, it's a single core processor, is really, really fast. It's doing billions of instructions per second. That means that I can get all my different applications and I can split my different processes into chunks, okay? And I can get, allocate each chunk a section of CPU time. So that means that the CPU is still working on one instruction at a time. However, it's doing it so quickly, yeah, it looks like multiple applications are running simultaneously. Now, obviously, not all processes can be running at the same time because we've said that the core can only process one instruction at a time. So then what processes when they're not basically in a running state? So there's three states that any process can be in. It can be waiting. That means that it's waiting for something to happen. It could be waiting for processing time. It could be waiting for data to arrive. It could be waiting for buffers to fill up. It could be waiting for input from the user. Okay, all sorts of stuff. And uh, processes can be in a runnable state. That means that they've got the data or the input that they need. They're ready to run. However, it's not their turn to run yet. Okay. So there's the CPU, the, uh, the operating system hasn't yet said to the, uh, the CPU right now, start working on that task. And then we've got the final running state where they basically, the CPU is cracking on with that particular process and getting on with the job. All right. So if we think about, um what could be happening if you look at the little diagram on the right hand side okay if a process is waiting from a waiting state it's now received its input or data the data is loaded so it can go into a runnable state once it's running runnable it can either start running or if it's running it can either go back into a waiting state or it can go back to a runnable state okay because it's come off the cpu so it's no longer being processed so if you look on the left hand side now Let's try and apply that to a particular um, uh, situation. So say, for example, you've got, your, you've got a music player, you've got iTunes or Winamp, all right? Historically, if you remember what Winamp is, yeah, you're listening to some music. So what state would it, would it be in for each of those things? If it's idle, no instruction received, it's waiting, okay? Then someone's clicked, uh, selected a, a song by clicking on play, uh, right? So therefore, the input has been received and it's ready to be processed, so therefore, the program is now in a runnable state, okay? We, we, we selected that tune and we hit okay, so it's processing the, the song that we've selected, so it's in a running state. 
then maybe it's now data needs to be buffered okay from the hard disk so your mp3 file needs to be loaded for it to be it for before it can start playing so your application your process goes back into a waiting state when you're ready to play you're runnable you're ready to run you've got your data you're good to go okay but you haven't yet your priority isn't high enough to be allocated um time on the cpu so you've got to wait okay when you're processing your data into music output for so someone can hear the music playing your application is running then it might go back into a ready to play state that means it's runnable then you've got to again process a chunk into music so that means you're running okay so you can see how your application your process can switch between waiting runnable and running states okay so what's the possible problem with that what happens if a process stays in a runnable state for a long time yeah well you should think um what happens when you've got loads of applications open you're working on one quite a lot and then what do the other ones look like they're doing yeah often when it's when an application is ready to run but it can't run it will look like it's hanging it's crashed or it's frozen okay because it's ready to run but it hasn't been got high enough priority to be allocated a percentage of the cpu's time okay so what you should start thinking to yourself what might cause these kinds of things to happen right what can hold um, a program in a runnable state okay it could be that another program has got higher priority okay and so therefore it's basically been allocated a greater percentage of the cpu's time yeah if you um have a look at this uh, screenshot okay so you can see from here uh, if you relate that back to what we were talking about, you can see uh, a whole bunch of processes running. Okay, um, so the obviously the CPU is having to um, dedicate a large um, amount of its time uh, between different processes. Okay, um, if you you can see that over there, there's a, a large number of processes, and that's just the top part of the screen. It can scroll down a lot further. Okay. Here's another thing over here, another screenshot. You can see, all right, at the moment, the CPU is actually quite idle. It's only being used 2% of its capacity, all right? Um, you can uh, also see, sorry, I got distracted there by the number of cores in this CPU. Um, if you look down at the bottom underneath the physical memory um, uh, graph, you can see system, there's threads and processes. So there's 177 processes running, okay? So that's uh, possibly 177 different applications, okay? But there's 2,443 threads. So if you think back to um, when we were learning about multiple cores on a CPU, you should remember what the differences between threads and processes are. If you can't remember, you need to go look it up and find out, all right? Now, this is a common question that often comes up in an exam paper. Explain how multitasking is carried out on a computer. So if I was going to summarize that, this is the way I would explain it. Okay, C uh, CPU can only basically process one instruction at a time. So therefore, it can only work on one, at one process at a time. That's obviously no use to the user because you want to be work on multi you want to be working on multiple tasks at the same time. So multitasking divides a process into chunks where each chunk is allocated a percentage of the CPU time. Okay, uh, because the CPU is very very fast, it appears to the user as if all the programs are being processed at once. And a process can be in three different states. It can be waiting, runnable, or running. So waiting is where it's waiting for data to load or waiting for user input. Runnable means that it has received the input or has received the data and it's just waiting, it's, uh, awaiting an opportunity to be allocated CPU time. And then running means that the application is now, the process is now um, running on the CPU. So it's being, the, being processed. Okay, so you should be able to explain now how, how multitasking works on a computer.